Welcome to exercise number 17, in which we are going to cover a very interesting concept. As stated before, we are still working with analysis, so we are not that much interested into actually solving the problem, but we just want to lay out the fundamentals or the idea how we could approach this problem to solve it. Okay, so here it goes. In this figure, a section of a fire protection system is illustrated. So we have the system right here, maybe a sprinklers or something like that. Featuring a pump task with drawing water at the rate of 1,500 gallons per minute. So we got flow rate, that's great. From a reservoir at a given temperature, so that temperature may be used because water changes density with respect to temperature, but overall speaking, yeah, it's just information. Delivering it to point B. So this is point B from the diagram uh, with an observed energy loss of 0 0.65 feet between the reservoir, so this is the reservoir, I'm going to be assuming this is the reservoir, and point A. So that's kind of funny, we are not giving all the data, so remember this will be the friction loss. Maybe we can calculate later on the friction loss from these pipelines, let's see what we are asked. The main question, calculate the depth or height needed to uphold a pressure of at least 5 PSIG at point A. And yeah, this is a very interesting case because we have A and B, but we also have this point right here and we are given these points before. So yeah, let us make the analysis guys. This is a trick question as you can see because we have H value, which is right here. Why are we talking about the height of this tank if we're talking about our system being this one right here? Well, in reality, this is a compound problem because we have problem one and we have problem two and the beauty of this is that with problem two you can calculate data if required but for now let's stick to problem number one problem number one will be this value i'm interested in the tank and the suction line why because we want to calculate the height in order to avoid pressure loss in the suction line which is a topic that we are going to be exploring later on cavitation but for now let's focus here okay so my main analysis is going to be C and D. I'm not going to be using A and B because it can be confusing, misleading. I'm going to be using these values right now. Okay, this is my main equation. And remember that the flow go goes from C to D. So you just need to substitute B is going to be letter D uppercase and A is going to be letter C uppercase. Okay, what else can we analyze? Okay, so volumetric flow rate is given temperature with that we know the substance we can calculate the specific gravity and the specific weight of water we know the piping specification is a 10 inch diameter scheduled for a steel pipe so we can uh, verify the area of that and with the area and volumetric flow rate calculate velocities and so and from point c you can see that this is open to the air so this is a vent so velocity in a tank will be stagnant so velocity zero uh, pressure will be zero because I'm going to be using gauge. So this is gauge value. And the height, in reality, I don't know it. What I know is that I want to make the reference value the point of the suction line. You will see why. So this is H. Then point D, the interesting one is, well, we know the velocity is the volumetric flow rate divided by the area of the pipeline. Then we know that we cannot go below the five PSIG, which changing to pound force per feet square will be multiplying five times 144, we got 750 pound force per feet. And because I selected the reference, this value right here will be zero feet. Through this section, C and D, there is no pump, guys. I know that there is a pump, but this pump is actually part of the second part of the pipeline. Secondly, we are given a friction loss, and the friction loss may be due to the fitting right here in the tank, the length of the pipeline. And once again, there's no motors. So this is, is straightforward, no motors. You can say that, okay? And we go here. So let us calculate. This is atmospheric. So this is P pressure, gauge pressure. Uh, velocity needs to be calculated. We can ignore this one because it's stagnant. Uh, the height, this is actually height. And this is a numerical value. No motors, no pumps. Now what I'm going to be doing is essentially solving for pressure, for height, and this value can be substituted all right now i need h so i'm going to be sending h to the left and the main equation will be this one right here h equals the pressure in d which is the suction line 
divided by the uh, specific weight of the substance plus the friction loss. And we already have it, so I know I told you this is not a numerical calculation. This is mostly analytics, what I want to do. But let's do it just for the sake of curiosity. We know that at this temperature, water has this density, or specific weight, sorry. And we know that the pressure is given here. So cubic feet cancels each other. We end up with feet, pound force, pound force cancel each other, and the friction loss. As you can see, we need a 12.85 feet height in order to ensure the pressure will be 5 PSIG. And there you have it, guys. I know that we made some calculations on mechanical energy equation, but generally speaking, I'm pretty sure that you can continue straightforward with this course. Hey there, I hope that you are enjoying so far the course because this is just a preview that I uploaded to YouTube. So if you want to check out the full content of this course, maybe you're looking for a specific problem or a specific solvent exercise, or just to know all the theory and structure, ensure to check out this link right here. Now, of course, you will get access to all the full dynamic video lectures. I've also added some text and summaries in each specific lecture. We have a lot of solvent exercises, all explained step by step. A lot of downloadable material, for instance, the equation booklet, the spreadsheet that are modeling certain type of systems or so, PDF sheet, and industry vocabulary. Not only that, in order to evaluate yourself, we have prepared some quizzes so you ensure that you are learning all the way long. And finally, guys, the top question and answer for job interview. If you are going to take this to the next level, you're looking for a job, and you know that you require this knowledge, you are going to get some very useful questions. I hope that you enroll in the course, and I'll see you in class.